Welcome to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Thank you very much for joining us here on KDK Plus. As we started this broadcast over on KDKA, we continue now here until 930. Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke with you. We will be taking your phone calls later in this segment. In the meantime, first though, Chris, we're going to talk about a much needed win, 17-10 on the road. Baltimore is, you know, still motivated. They wanted to win that game regardless who they had in there. Smart move by John Harbaugh not to expose some of his veterans. But I thought a guy like Patrick Queen played an awful lot. I was a little surprised by that. He played a lot of ball, and I thought he played pretty good. There were times when he, you know, he got beat. He got blocked out by Broderick Jones on that touchdown run by Najee. He was beat by Najee on that rollout to get him first down that kept driving the ball. But I think this uh, Ravens team, it's the scheme, it's the toughness, it's the mentality. That's why they're grinders. That's why they come out and play this kind of style of football every single week, no matter who's in the lineup, Bob. Yeah, and Mike Tomlin uh, talked about what Patrick Queen said this week, that not many teams want to play our style. Well, Tomlin said, yes, we do. We play it, and they played it today, and they won that big physical game in the trenches. One guy on defense, you know, we talked about Eric Rowe. I think Eric Rowe's opened up eyes. He, he could be on this roster next year. Really good veteran, and he played well today. But Mark Robinson, this is the best we've seen of number yes. 93. I don't... I've never seen him this active. Now, he's had opportunities to, to play, not as much as this one. He got in there today. He made some tackles for losses. He punched out a football uh, and caused a turnover. These are the kinds of things you want to see from this yeah. guy who was a seventh-round pick originally. Yeah, I mean, you have Melvin Gordon who ran the ball, and here comes Marcus Robinson, puts his shoulder on the ball, knocks it out. That was the first turnover of the game. And, and then you had Marcus Robinson come on a blitz unblocked. And when you come on block like that, it's hard not to miss the layup, right? It's hard not to miss that sack against a mobile quarterback like Tyler Huntley. But what he did, he took him down, and it had a big impact on this game early on. Najee Harris is at the podium right now at M&T Bank Stadium. Let's take you there. Uh, we knew that going into the game. Well, we knew the weather report. We knew exactly what type of game was going to be, physical, like, like always, though. Um, but, yeah, man, we knew it was going to be this type of game. Uh, so, leaning more on position, these specific, us running backs knew that it's going to lean on us um, more than any other game. So, yeah, we knew. Not sure you feel like getting the 10-7. I'm sorry, what did you say? The team getting the 10-7 seven collectively, how do you feel about that? Man, it's, it's good. This is a, since I've been in the league, I first, my first uh, 10, 10, 10 win uh, year, I guess, 10 uh, wins in a year, I think, uh, was this? We eight and seven last year, right? And then nine and seven our rookie year or something like that. Nine, seven and one. So I mean it's good. Um I uh, wish I can take back some games that, that we lost and we could have, you know, had a better record. But um to hit ten wins is good for the team, not only that, but for Mike T. Um just a good coach and you know how he's been carrying us along this whole year, I think that it, it really shows in you know, us him basically just um showing how, how resilient and how calm he always be, even when the stuff looks bad and you know, it's a lot of negative stuff being said. He always just stays the same person. And, um, man, so I'm <clears throat> happy for Mike T and uh, the team. Did you know, I'm sorry, somebody asked, did you know that they were going to kind of put the team on your shoulders? And uh, when that happens, you will welcome that. Do you look forward to that? Yeah, man. Um, it's not the first time that that's yeah. happened. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, going into the game, like I said, the, the week of, we all talked about it. Um, the biggest thing that we was uh, worried about is not like, you know, um, carrying the team or what you say or, or that. It's just the ball security. As the first, my first play, I, you know, I tried to tuck it away and it slipped right out my arm. So um, I knew that that was one thing that was, that was, uh, that was, that, that needs to be emphasized a little bit more. I, so I went on the sideline. I tried to get it, got like two towels. I keep trying to rub my arms and, and things like that. And, um, you know, just this game, we knew that ball security is going to be a big issue. And that's going to be the outcome of the game. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, man. Even though they were resting certain guys, yeah. was, for the most part, their they're front seven out there. And you were still able to run the ball as effectively as you did. I mean, we, we, we wasn't really too worried about who was going to play. We knew guys wasn't going to play. But, I mean, like, shoot, last year we did the same thing with all the guys in it. Um, first game wasn't the running numbers. But, I mean, whenever – the Teams play against us. Um, we're never worried about who's playing or who's not. I mean, we just got to worry about um, getting the win. Um, so this game right here, we knew that they was going to rest some of the guys. Um, but the main thing for us to do was to get the win so we could even get into the playoffs. Uh, that's all that matters. And, um, man, we did that today. We didn't really care about who was out there um, or uh, how long they were going to play. Uh, Really, you know, whoever was in there, we, we, we wanted to play so physical that if they did play their ones, their guys, 
um, we wanted the hardball to say, you know, we got to get them out of there because of how physical we're playing. So um, I think we did that today. And uh, hopefully we could, uh, I think we'll play them again, right? If, if, if things work out, we'll go back to yeah, 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 yeah. Aji, what was the um, was the feeling in the locker room after the game? Is there a sense of accomplishment of what you guys have done these last three games? Yeah, yeah. Um, man, a, a, a sign of uh, just an, in a way of relief, but you know, just a sign of uh, re- resiliency. You know, the like I said, I keep saying that word, but it's true. The the, the times that you know things looked really rough, uh, we we always kept as a team, and we we kept you know playing our football and our identity. And when we got in the locker room, everybody was just all turning up and stuff, and just excited and. You know, you see, you see more smiles than than, than frowns. Um, so that's always a good thing to see. I'm always proud of that. Um, you know, just to see guys smiling that they usually don't smile. Like even Isaac was smiling. Yeah, exactly right. Y'all laughing because y'all know. That. Yeah. I mean, so you know, to see him smile um, is is good. And uh, you know, it's just just that that feeling that we got to got to keep carrying on this feeling, and uh, you know, and we could do damage. Where are you gonna watch the game tomorrow? And what's gonna be on? Tomorrow? I'm not. I'm gonna watch film. I'm gonna watch film. I gotta watch film on this game and um, and uh, really just things I need to get better at. And you know, and then if if we're in, we're in. And uh, just watch film on whoever we're playing next. Najee, how do you anticipate finding out then if you guys are in? You know, wait for a call, a text, get score updates on your phone. I don't have that either. I just get a message. You know, it's, we got a group message. They'll say we're in, or like they'll say sorry. It's what it's one of the things. Yeah. We always have confidence. It's just execution. We all like like we always know we, we always know what we could be. Um, like I said, it just comes down to execution, and and sometimes it works that way, sometimes it doesn't. You know, these past three weeks it has, um, and we just got to find a way just to keep this keep this keep this going. Uh, maybe that's. You know how we practice, um, how we do a little, that little extra thing that maybe we didn't do last week. Just keeping at that, um, watch some more film as a team. You know, do more team things, and uh, man, and just and just keep at it. Do you feel like maybe this is the best stretch of your career so far, Najee? Best stretch of me. Like past three games, we've been running lately. No, there's a lot of stuff I need to work on. Thanks, man. That's it. Okay. All right, that's Najee Harris after the game, and take a look at his numbers. Another really good game, especially the weather conditions, and this is his type of football with 112 yards. He goes over 1,000 for the third consecutive year, and he was active in the pass game. Normally, that's reserved for Jalen Warren, but he was the guy taking it half. Yeah, and the reason, I think the reason why Jalen struggled to hold on to the football, he had a couple fumbles, put the balls on the ground, had one that was taken over by the Ravens. But you look at Najee. He did not have a 100-yard game, Bob, until last week. In the last two weeks, he has carried the ball 27 times last week, 26 times today, for an average of about 4.4 yards. And he has been the bell cow, the kind of running back the Steelers wanted when they drafted him. And they're finally getting that. Hopefully, this will stay consistent if the Steelers can get in the playoffs. Yeah, they need both, actually. Jalen Warren gives them that little uh, explosiveness that, that he can show you uh, when he gets the ball. He runs angrily as well, so it's a good one-two punch for sure. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, only two catches today. You'd like to see more, but one was a big one when everyone was kind of zeroed in on George Pickens, and Baltimore wanted to take Pickens out of the game. They successfully did it. Not one target for him today. Uh, the Steelers need to free him up, I'm, I imagine, if they get into the playoffs. But Fryermuth, let's hear from him after the game. Out there today? A little bit, but it had an impact for them as well. So, uh, you know, I think we executed well uh, for the most part, and, uh, you know, excited that we got the win. This running game just keeps clicking. What, what's been going on out there? Yeah, we're just executing, uh, you, know, um, you know, executing our blocks. Um, you know, the big thing in my mind is we're working our double teams exceptionally well, so, you know, we're able to get to the second level quick, so uh, you know, just doing a great job of that. Playoff hope's still alive for you guys. That's always a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, we need a couple teams to lose, and you know, hopefully they do that, and, uh, you know, if we get in the playoffs, we're going to be a scary team, so uh, I'm excited, hopefully, for the opportunity. Pat, the way you guys put things together here the last couple uh, games, you know, how do you feel about it? I feel great. Um, obviously, you know, we, we, we shot ourselves in the foot for a little bit uh, there, but, you know, we were able to, you know, bounce back. Uh, we hit some adversity and be able to bounce back off it and, uh, you know, able to put some stuff together and playing our best ball right now, um, and, and it's the time to do so, so uh, it feels great. Tough conditions, but what about Mason? Yeah, Mason's done great. Uh, he's came in the past three games, and um, you know he's executed the game plan, done a great job, and uh, can't say enough good things about him. All right, that's Pat Fryermuth, two catches, 21 yards, two targets. That was it. 
Uh, I want to ask you, Chris, about something that Najee Harris said. Yeah. When asked, will you be watching, he said, absolutely not. I have to watch film. Uh, is that really true? I mean, come on. You guys as players, I remember the one time where everyone's at Heinz Field at the time, and they're sitting on their helmets on the field. Now, this was after their game was over. They knew what had to happen, and they're watching a the game. Everyone's tuned into this stuff. Is he really not going to pay attention to what goes on with Jacksonville or Buffalo? Well, listen, remember last week they, they showed on, the, on highlights over the week how the 49ers were in the tunnel watching yes. the game, and they saw that they took over the number one seed and had a, had a bye? They will be watching these games now. Will he sit down and have a, a you know a drink and 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 eat food and, and tailgate and watch the game? No, but he will watch the game. He will see what's going on. He, Najee Harris is a singularly focused guy. There's no way when you know your playoff hopes are on the line that you're not going to watch and see what's taking place. <laughs> yeah, it's only human nature. What about another tight end, Connor Hayward? He had a big first down reception on that first touchdown drive. Yeah. It was a uh, eight yard need, and he got to the sticks, uh, extended the drive. It later resulted in the Harris touchdown. Let's hear from number 83, who made some good blocks today as well. Uh, Steelers conditions, honestly. Uh, we practicing it um, this week. All the elements, Coach Tomlin always wants us to practice like we play. Uh, and in the days we were in the indoor, we were using a wet football. Uh, they kept on wetting it before every play, just kept on trying to, you know, uh, simulate it to the game. Does it have much of an impact on what you guys wanted to do there offensively? Yeah, I think so. Uh, control the ball. Um, you know, we didn't want to turn the ball over. We had some turnovers. Uh, they happen sometimes. But um, we played well overall. Um, and, you know, you know, just another opportunity. And, you know, we'll sit back, uh, watch the game tomorrow, and hopefully we're in. That onside kick, what were you thinking? It was coming right at you. You just want to get down on it? Uh, I knew it was uh, Tucker going to kick it. Uh, I, I know that they put 11 in to kick a little bit before, but um, I knew on a crunch time they were going to put nine back in, and uh, it's, you don't know what to expect with them. He's a really good kicker uh, and has a lot of different um, skills and moves. So, uh, you know, I would just – uh, ready if the ball was kicking me, and it was, and you know I'm glad that I could do my job and still the game. Can you talk a little bit about the the last three wins you guys put together? I mean, it seems like a different team. What's been going right for you guys out there, and how does it feel? I think we're just all straining more. Uh, we wanted more than the teams we're playing, and uh, it's going to come to that every game. Sometimes it's about the X and O's, but this game wasn't about the X and O's. It's about who wanted it and who won the, the line of scrimmage, and you know, and who's going to make those splash plays. Got a chance still, though. Playoff hope still a lot. Yes, sir. That's all we can wish for. <laughs> And you heard him, he's going to watch. So there's the truth. He's going to sit down <laughs> and watch those games. But isn't it terrible, though? You get to sit back down and wish and hope that this other like teams win. This is like eight times win. under yeah. Mike Tomlin's yeah, yeah, I mean, you've you got to win the games in, in October, November, September. Sometimes they lose them, especially the games when you play against a 2-10 and ten team like they did back-to-back -back against the, the Cardinals and the Patriots and lose those games. they got to be kicking themselves if they – do not make the playoffs because Buffalo can't win or because the Jags can't win down there in Tennessee. It's going to kill them that they end up losing two games against very, really poor teams. And again, if I had told you at the beginning of the season, the Steelers would win their division five wins, one loss, sweep the Ravens and sweep the Bengals. Uh, and yet here they are, maybe not in the playoffs. And then you look at Cincinnati, they're eight and three outside of their division, but they're 0 and five in the division. It's the wild and wacky world of the NFL. That's how it keeps you tuned in. That's for sure. 17, 10, your final score. You see it quarter by quarter, 10 points in the fourth for the Steelers to put it away. Big touchdown pass from Mason Rudolph to Deontay Johnson covering 71 yards. Steelers now did their job. They hope that Tennessee and or Miami can help them out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers extra point. All right, welcome back as we continue right here on KDK plus Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke, and this is your path to the playoffs. Three different scenarios, Chris. The first one, of course, you need the Jags to lose or tie to Tennessee tomorrow. That game's a one o'clock game. And then the Bills, if, if Jacksonville wins, then you got to hope pure and simple that the Bills lose to the Dolphins and the Dolphins have several injuries to deal with. Colts and Texans ends in a tie. That game is playing tonight. And if it ends in a tie, the Steelers are in. So we may find out tonight that they get in. But I don't think that game's going to end in a tie because both no. have aspirations, maybe even winning the division. Yeah, I just I mean a tie was very, very rare. Right? How many ties happen in a season? Maybe one in a season, if that. And so now you look at this. So pull those ties out. What's got to happen is the Jags have to go into Tennessee in Vrabel, who's created this culture right now, this environment of fighting and a mentality that they're going to try to win this game. And, and you've got Jags going in there not knowing who their starting quarterback is 
or you got to, they got to win that game, or you got to go down with Buffalo to Miami, and they got to beat they got to beat a team that is beat up right now. The Miami Dolphins, Bob, are really beat up. Tariq Hill has a bad ankle. Jalen Waddle, you don't know if he's going to play, and then you also have Chubbs, who got hurt last week towards ACL. Tua came out early, so there's a lot of questions down there too about that. So it looks to me like that's going to be a tough ask for the Dolphins to beat the Bills. And Josh Allen is nine and two all time in his career against Miami. He's done well down there. The two losses were one possession loss at the end of the game and Josh Allen has an opportunity to set a record a most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in one season he's currently tied with Jalen Hurts at 15 they both have one more game left so we'll see all right Alex Highsmith let's hear from number 56 after today's win and get the victory and we did that you know it wasn't perfect by any means but you know we came in and we did it can you kind of assess and maybe put into words what do you guys have been able to do these last three games I think you know it's just you know we're just playing you know great team ball you know all, all three phases and so you know we're just putting together at the right time and just you know just, we're just on the right track you know going to into the playoffs you know we, we have things happen tomorrow you know that, that'll get us in and so um, you know we just got to got to keep pushing and, and, and keep building on this did you see what happened on the the TJ play out there I, um, I was just chasing after the quarterback and um, you know I I just saw him fell and he was he was screaming and you know um, I just hope it's, it's nothing bad because um, you know, you know, that's that's my brother and you know he's he's a leader on our team and he plays his he plays his ass off every single game he was balling the night and um, I could just you know I just pray everything everything is is, is all right and, um, you know because he's, he's someone who loves his game so much and he puts his heart and soul into it and um, you know you hate see see someone like him you know have an injury like that. How about the way you guys played? I mean, despite the conditions defensively, really holding them, they didn't do much except for a couple plays there. Yeah, I mean, I think it was just a good team ball. You know, we did a good job of getting off the field quick. You know, we had a, a few three and outs, and so that's something that we've just kind of been preaching on and harping on is just getting off the ball, uh, just get, getting off the field and, and really quickly and getting the ball back to our offense. So uh, I feel like we did a good job of that tonight. All right, that's Rich Walsh in the locker room with Alex Smith. Double trouble. One-sided here, uh, T.J. Watt had a very big game with eight tackles. Uh, he drifted back into coverage a couple of times, which created some problems. Two sacks, 19 on the year, only the fourth player in history now with two seasons of at least 19 sacks, tackled for losses. How about three? That's the number that, to me, separates him over Miles Garrett. He's There's no always question. making tackles in the backfield. People want to argue, well, sacks don't have total impact on the game. Yes, they do because they set a drive back, and you got to usually got to end up with a punt. But if you look at what T.J. Watt does, T.J. Watt is a game changer. Three tackles for a loss. I believe he leads the NFL in tackles for a loss. He is an all-around type of player that should be voted the most valuable player in the NFL on defense. Yeah, it's going to come down to him, Garrett, or maybe Micah Parsons, Parsons in there as well. So we'll see. Keeping with the linebacker theme, number 44, Marcus Golden, got in there quite a bit today. Let's hear from him. To come up with that ball, I mean, that was one of the biggest plays of the game. Oh man, I was gonna come up with that no matter what. I don't care how many people tried to take it from me. I know my team needed, and I need to get out there and make some plays, man. And we was able to do that. Shout out to everybody that was on the field making it happen. Shout out to everybody, man. We just came together today and made this happen. This is a good win. I guess it doesn't matter how you guys win. The most important thing today was getting that win. Yeah, win is the win, no matter what, man. That's the NFL. We can make it seem like it's not, but if you in that game and you got the win, man, you happy and you ready to move on to the next week. So we happy about the win. Just got to keep grinding. Did the weather play a big factor out there for you guys today? No, nah, you can't blame it on the weather, man. When you get an opportunity to play, play for the Steelers in a game like that against the Ravens, it's supposed to rain. It's supposed to be muddy, man. That's the type of physical game this is. So it was perfect for this. For these two teams to match, the weather was perfect today. I guess it wasn't all good news. I mean, did you see the TJ play and what happened out there? Did man, I didn't see. I saw him on the ground. You don't never want to see the best defensive player in the NFL on the ground, man, especially a great guy like him, great leader. But we don't know what's wrong. He's a tough guy, man. You, you never know with him. He's a tough guy. So hopefully he's all right, man. Hopefully he can be out there with us. Playoff hope's still alive for you guys. I mean, that's that's the good thing, isn't it? Yes, that's real good. Anytime you can have playoff hopes or want to get in the playoff, that's a good thing, man. We just want to keep working. Hopefully the weekend go good, man. But no matter what, we're going to keep working and we'll be ready. Thank you. All right, here's a look at the leading tacklers today. Again, Eric Rowe, to me, he gets a game ball. He was all over the place. Ten solo tackles, forced to fumble, did all those things. He's an experienced guy. They had him around and activated him. And then you see the list, Mark Robinson on that, and Golden. Yeah, we'll look at T.J. Watt, eight tackles, six solo, and, and he didn't even play full, three full quarters. Eric Rowe, game-changing play. Yeah, he had 12 tackles, 10 solo. But that punch out turned the game around because now it gives the Steelers in Baltimore territory. They were able to go down, take critical time off the clock, Bob, take air out of the stadium and put a, put a field goal up on the board that made it a two-score game. 
Big stuff indeed. Jerry Dulac, our insider from the Post Gazette, has tweeted out that TJ Watt will have an MRI tomorrow. Right here in Pittsburgh, when he gets back to determine the extent of this injury, it cannot be evaluated until then. So, again, it's an MCL strain. That's what Adam Schefter had reported. And, it, you know, depending on how severe it is, although, from what I understand, T.J. Watt had told people in there that his teammates said he wanted to get back into the game and the Steelers would not allow it, which is the proper way to handle that. So, uh, that guy, you can't keep him out too long. And if it's a playoff game, I would imagine if there's any way possible, he'll be back in the lineup next week. But first things first, they got to get there, and they need some help along the way. We'll talk about that. We'll continue with post-game reaction, and then your phone calls all coming up until 9.30 right here on your neighborhood Ford store, Extra Point, which is soon to be followed by the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Stick with us right here on KDK+. Plus. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store, Steelers Extra Point. We continue right here on KDK Plus and want to show you uh, the standings as they ended up. Uh, and this is, as I said before, it's, it's really crazy to me to say that the Steelers, 5-1 and one in their division, which includes sweeps over the Ravens and the Bengals, and yet here they are in third place. But that's how competitive it was. Uh, not in last place, that belongs to Cincinnati. And Cincinnati went 8-3 and three outside of their division. They were 0-5 and, and they have one more game left tomorrow. And they won't see Joe Flacco, they will see Jeff Driscoll instead. Um, Jeff Driscoll? Yeah. Wow, okay. Fifth we, quarterback for the Browns. That's unbelievable. And Joe Flacco, they're saving the 38-year-old young man for the playoffs. But if you look here, 5-1, and one, we always think the division the most important games but really, the reality is, it's about winning more games. And you look right here, the Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens have been really good against the NFC. They won the important games. The Steelers lost to the Texans. They lost to the Jaguars. They lost to the Cars. They lost to the Patriots. And these are games that you would have thought the Steelers were going to win at the time. So Baltimore goes 3-3 three and three in the division, but that's good enough to get the number one seed again. The wild and wacky world of the NFL. Mason Rudolph, how about this? Most 60-yard-plus touchdown throws this season. Tua Tango Vailoa has four. Second on the list is Mason Rudolph with three. How about he that? He spoke after the game. Let's hear from him. Yeah, it was uh, probably the most challenging, you know, weather I've had to deal with uh, in my career. But, um, man, so proud of, you know, for the most part, took care of the ball. And then we had a, I put one on the ground, Jalen, but uh, we, were, we were able to recover the one at the end, which was huge. Broderick did a great job. And, and, um, so just probably we ran the ball up front. I mean, we thought we controlled the line of scrimmage pretty, pretty darn well. And <clears throat> we knew we were going to have to, you know, ride the wave of our offensive line. And they, they, uh, they paved the way for us. Hey, you talked about reading safeties the other day, just as a general uh, rule of thumb. Did you see something uh, before the pass to Deontay or post-snap? Or was that where you were going all along? Um, they took Pat away. They did a good job of taking him away anywhere with the ball. They were dropping a defensive lineman or just hugging him immediately with the linebacker. And so it was sort of, uh, I'm not going to get into the read, but I, it was, uh, yeah, he, Deontay was a big part of the read, and they took another, they took Pat away. And so <clears throat> the ball went to him, and man, he uh, did a great job after the catch and split those guys and um, ran fast like he always does and scored. I'm so happy for him. In terms of that play, I mean, you come out of the, I mean, it, it kind of been a field position battle mm -hmm. at that point in, in the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter there. You come out and you hit that play. Um, it, I mean, was there kind of a little bit of a, a weight lifted off there with that? Absolutely. I mean, back and forth, you know, it's a, it was a punting match there in the third quarter for a while. And I don't know, did, did, was it, did we score there on the, early in the fourth or late in the third? First play, first play of the fourth. Of the fourth. Um, so yeah, so third quarter was, you know, a little sloppy on, on my and our, and our part as an offense, and so it was a big energy boost I know for our team and for our defense to get that lead and, and know they could, you know, that Baltimore was now going to be in a drop back passage you know, situation. What is the um, on those slants or even to the yak that we talked about? What is the is there an to, not just be accurate way to throw but accurate? To I just think of the nature of the route. I mean, in, in breaking routes, George, you know, um, against uh, the Bengals. I mean, if, if you're good at in, if you are a good team at running in breaking routes, 
typically you're going to, you know, well, if they, if they take a wrong angle and you make people miss and you score, and that's what both those guys did on those two occasions. So, um, you know, I think if, at times we've, we've thrown a lot of outbreakers and they're safer throws, but sometimes if, if the, the coverage dictates it, you know, those in-breaking routes can really get you big yards after the catch. All right, Mason Rudolph after another good game, 18 of 20. And he threw for a touchdown, a 115 passer rating. These are your JP Roofing final stats. Chris, break them down for us. Well, the time of possession again is key, right? Whenever you can win the time of possession, you've got a higher likelihood of winning a game. But when I look at this right now, it's a pretty balanced game, Bob. The biggest one is just rushing. The Steelers, again, dominated rushing the football, and that's because they continue to pound. They continue to stay committed to the running game, and that's when you're going to get good running. The Steelers, at times, when they've struggled to run the ball, they've gotten away from it. I like how they're staying committed to the run game. Deontay Johnson was targeted five times, four catches, the biggest of which was the game winning touchdown 71 yards on a big third and four play from Mason Rudolph. Number 18 spoke after the game. Uh, we, we got the right uh, coverage we were looking for. Um, great call by the OC, um, just giving us giving me a chance, you know, just to make a big play. And you know, I was able to come down with it and you know, take it to the end zone. You know, it was a big play. You know, I was just trying to make a play for for the offense because somebody had to make a play on the offense. And you know, I'm saying we needed it, and it changed. It was a game changer. Uh, how perfect was the throw? Oh, it was perfect. Right between the two defenders. Uh, it was on me right where I needed it so I can be able to body catch it and keep it, catch it in stride and, uh, and score. So. How were those conditions out there as far as holding on to the ball? Say it again. How were the conditions? It was cold, rain, a little bit of snow. It was it was tough, but you know what I'm saying we just got to do a better job at you know what I'm saying? ball security uh, in those moments because, you, know, you know, anything can happen. You know, those, those fumbles can change the game at any moment. So luckily, you know, we was able to stay on top of the ball and I'm saying, do what we had to do to finish the game. John, what was the feeling uh, in the locker room after the game? Is there a sense of uh, accomplishment, what you guys have done these last three games? Uh, yeah, you know, the energy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to play. Everybody not done yet. So we're just trying to keep things rolling. You know what I'm saying? You know, I take one day at a time. And then you're saying, just wait and see how these, how these games go tomorrow. <laughs> Did that play go exactly by the script? Was there anything that went off script? Oh, no. Nah, that was in the game plan, yeah. We, we worked on that play during the, the week, early in the week. And um, just a matter of opportunity whenever the play is called, just execute. Something, something that you liked? Something that yeah. the coaches liked in, the, uh, in that scene there? Yeah, they told me on the sideline what we were going, at, what going with before the play was even called. So I was already ready, you know what I'm saying, just preparing myself what I was going to do in that moment. So, and uh, I executed it. Deontay, what is it? All right, Deontay Johnson after the game, again, four for five, four receptions on five targets, but the big one was 71 yards, the game-winning score, and that bumped that average up to 22.3. Absolutely, and listen, what you love is Deontay Johnson has been taking the back seat to George Pickens the last two weeks as he's putting up big yards, but today it was Deontay Johnson's turn because the, the Ravens were not going to allow George Pickens to go off in this game. That huge 71-yard touchdown catch and run really blew the game up for the Steelers and helped them go along to win this game ultimately. So ultimately, if they do get in, somebody else is going to say the same thing. We're not going to let George Pickens go deep. Yeah. So that's why other people are going to get opportunities if that's the case. And that's they got to go to for Iremuth. They got right. to go to Deontay Johnson. What I love, though, about Mason is he's able to distribute the ball around. He sees it. And I love how he doesn't just come out and say, I'm going to dump it right away. I'm just going to throw it right here to Jalen Warren. I'm going to throw it here to Nanaji. He sits in there. He looks downfield, looks downfield. And if nothing's there, then he goes to Jalen, and that's why you're seeing these long throws. You're seeing, um, he, like he said, in three starts, he has one less touchdown over 60 yards than Tua Tungalavea, who's played over, what, 16 games now? Yeah, and the bottom line is George Pickens had 326 yards in two games. Today, nothing, although he blocked very well, and he did speak after the game. Uh, really a lot, both sides, both teams too, uh, I'll probably say. The conditions were... Real, real bad, you know, super, super cold, rainy. I guess it doesn't matter how you guys won, whether it was ugly or not. I mean, it, all that matters is getting the win, right? Exactly. That's the only thing that matters, uh, engineering victory. Can you kind of assess and maybe put into words what's been going on the last three weeks, why you guys have been so successful out there? Uh, I'll probably say that's a team that likes to work. You know, like I said earlier before, on the back half of the season, you know, 
we we the only guys we got, you know what I mean? Uh, so we kind of just, you know, stick together. I guess the best thing about today is the playoff hopes are still alive for you guys, right? <laughs> what are you going to be doing tomorrow, watching these games? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, trying to figure out who wins and who doesn't. Yeah. And it, it, oh, Oh, I was going to say, all you need is one play, George, and you guys got that one big play there offensively, that pass. You know, uh, could you kind of talk me through what happened there? I know it wasn't you. But... Uh, it was just, a, you know, a simple concept, but with Tay, you know, running a great route, getting open and yards after catch, uh, that's always a killer to the other team. So uh, that was a real splash play in the type of weather conditions that we had tonight. So it's much needed for sure. All right, that's George Pickens. Uh, shout out to our photographer down there, Ian Smith, who had to keep that camera from fogging up because they went from, you know, 30 degree drizzling rain cold into an 80 degree sauna, basically. He, he should work for ESPN to go up there and wipe their cameras. <laughs> Half the time you're looking into a camera, had spots all they, over yeah, from the rain. It's hard to see, but it was a nasty day out there. There's no question. You can only imagine what it was like on the field. So Steelers end up winning 17 to 10. Uh, coming up a little bit later, we're going to be opening up the phone lines and taking your calls, your thoughts about this and what you think may happen with some of these other games. Currently, the Texans and Colts are playing, and if this one ends in a tie tonight, the Steelers are in. That would save you all from watching all day tomorrow. Save Don't us hold from your doing breath. it, too. Don't hold your breath it's on a tie. seven to three right now. Texans lead the Colts at Indianapolis. We'll take a break. Come back with more right after this on KDK+. Plus. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Right here on KDK Plus, Steelers win 17 to 10. They started with a Najee Harris six-yard touchdown run. That's a big drive. Took 12 plays, 76 yards. Steelers get in. And then after a fumble by Jalen Warren, it was Isaiah Likely completing a long drive there from Tyler Huntley. That made it 7 to 7. But the big play in this one, third and four in the fourth quarter, still tied. Deontay Johnson, 71 yards, slant pattern, right on the money, boom, he's gone, 14 to 7. Boswell and Tucker exchange field goal, 17 10 year final. We had Mike Tomlin on our news earlier, in case you missed it, here's some of what the head coach had to say. Man, I'm just really appreciative of the effort of the guys. Um, obviously, this is a tough place to play. That's probably three or four years in a row right there uh, that we've been able to come up here and get it done. And so we're thankful for that, for the efforts. Um, it was a tough environment today from a from a climate perspective, you know, the, 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 the ball security component was a challenge. But it was a challenge for both teams. Um, I thought it was significant in terms of how the game unfolded, uh, particularly in the first half for us. We were down there in scoring territory a couple of times, man, and came away with no points uh, because of lack of ball security. But as I said, it was going to be a challenging environment, and it was. Thankfully, we made enough plays um, to secure victory. Can't say enough about Eric Rowe. Um, Man, on, a, on another elevation, man, made a significant play on that punch out. Um, his efforts, um, Miles Jack's efforts, man, um, just solidifying us in some positions, man, where we were, we were really low on manpower. And um, those two guys have been significant, not only today, but over the last three weeks in terms of what we've done. Obviously, Rudolph's done a nice job, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention those two guys as well. Um, TJ is being evaluated with a knee injury. Um, I'll have more information probably next time we get together. Obviously disappointed in, in that, um, but, you know, there are challenges in the game of football. There are challenges in life, and so we'll deal with it, whatever it may be. Um, I'll pause and open up for questions. Mike, what was, what's the feeling in the locker room? Is there a sense of accomplishment what you guys have done these last three games? You know, we're really focused on what we needed to do the day, today. There's a simple sense of accomplishment regarding that. Um, and so we'll we'll see see about all that other stuff. How do you approach How do you approach these next twenty four hours? You know, we did the work that we needed to do today, and so that's you know that's less important. Mike was playing to put him on Najee's back, and uh, especially considering the conditions. Especially considering the conditions, yes. Mike, you came off the field yelling off the couch. Was that about Eric Rowe and, and Miles Jack? Yes. You know, there are some guys that handle those kind of conditions better than others, and. You know, um, Naj has a certain demeanor and play style that we covet and value. That's why we went to Tuscaloosa to get him. Uh, today was an example of that. Coach, when you talk about these playoff scenarios, um, are you going to be tuned in to the TV, or is it something you're just going to kind of... I don't know yet. I hadn't thought about it. Like I said, we were more concerned about the variables that we had control over. Um, those other ones are less important. We did what we needed to do this weekend. Like I know you said, TJ's being 
evaluated for a knee injury. Did he try to come back in after getting evaluated on the sideline on his back? I don't know that. Anyone else? I, I want to say about Mason that I have a confidence to in there throw that ball after he had had a couple knocked out of his hands early in the game. Like I mentioned several weeks ago, um, when we when we put him in the lineup, um, he has a unshakable confidence in himself, um, and and it is real. Mike, the the kick return where Godwin went out of bounds. Just what does that say about the way that Danny Smith coaches that group from that the presence of mind to make that play? It's just preparedness. That's what we do. Um, we go through scenarios. It's it's not anything dramatic, to be quite honest with you. Mike, Calvin Austin gave you some. Yeah, he had ball in the hand plus grass. Um, they got a talented punter, uh, but he created opportunity for us at times. Um, and so thankful for that. We didn't necessarily take advantage of the field position, you know, particularly that last one. We think we got the ball there to midfield with him roughly, and, and we, we weren't able to do anything with it. All right, that's Mike Tomlin following the game. Again, in case you missed it about TJ Watt. He will have an exam here in Pittsburgh, an MRI tomorrow about an MCL sprain. That's what Adam Schefter reported. That's what Jerry Dulac followed up to say that he will have that exam tomorrow. This, and I was looking at some information, a yeah. general timetable is a couple of weeks, but he's no ordinary guy, is he? No, and listen, Ian, Rapp Ian Rappaport is also saying that it's a grade three MCL right now without an MRI. That's a more serious MCL you know, sprain. So you're looking at it right now, and it's going to be hard pressed that the Steelers get in the playoffs for T.J. Watt to play next Sunday, but I would never put it past T.J. Watt. Look at today, eight tackles, two sacks, three tackles for a loss, and two QB hits in two and a half quarters of play, Bob. That's two and a half quarters of play. He was coming on there when he got hurt. And so a T.J. Watt kind of guy, but to me, the reason why you're relieved with this news is because going into the offseason, if he had an ACL, he could be out all offseason and rehab, all training camp, and come not come in until midseason next year. Really, it takes about a year or so for really a full recovery for an ACL. I know that it's sped up over the years just because of the prehab and the rehab and all of the type of surgeries, but it's a huge sigh of relief for the Steelers. Cam Hayward, number 97, the captain. He had things to say after the game. Let's tune in. Satisfaction. Um, you know, proud of the guys. We'll just keep battling back. Um, in my mind, we're going to have another one. Uh, keep stacking. Cam, a couple weeks ago, you were wearing the Believe shirt. Now you're wearing We Do Not Care. What's mm -hmm. the, the reasoning in going with this one today? It's a Mike T shirt. Uh, you know, and. Um, he's got a quote for everything, uh, but, uh, you know, um, just shutting out all the outside noise and understanding that we just need to get the job done. Um, you know, we could have been written off a long time ago, um, but the group held it together. Um, and we're able to find ways to win these last three weeks. What are these next 24 hours going to be for you? you um, recovery, getting ready for the next game. Team iffy to you at all today? I mean, at halftime, they had some momentum. They were getting the ball back. Seven seven at half. You know, uh, obviously we could have. We had some chances to, uh, you know, take the lead into the second half. But I felt like as a defense, we knew we needed to get it off the field. Um, couldn't surrender um, really any points. And um, you know, in these type of weather inclement games, you you know you gotta uh, get off the field quick. You gotta. Um, provide short period fields for our offense, um, and I just thought we did a good job of, you know, keep bouncing back. Uh, TJ went down in the third or third or fourth, and um, guys stepped up. Um, a guy like Ero, um, Eric Rowe, man, um, I don't know how he wasn't on a damn team. <laughs> man, that dude is just balled out, uh, and we've needed every bit of it. Um, you know, Mark Rob getting the. Uh, sack to start the game. Um, it was a multitude of guys, and I just felt like uh, whatever was going wrong, we had an answer for it. Cam, I know obviously you'd like to get in, but would you like to get in based on the way you guys are playing in these last three games? And yeah, the finding ways to win. Um, you know, uh, let us be dangerous. <laughs> you know, uh, you know we have we have a formula that's working right now. Um, you know, hopefully we can get some guys back in the fold, um, and, you know, we're not going to discount ourselves. We, we know we got work to do, and um, looking forward to it. That, Ken, you guys have replaced a lot of people all year. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you had to replace TJ, could you do it? 
we better be able to. I know it's a it's a tall ask. Um, it's not going to be one guy. Uh, you know, we're going to have to mix some things up. Um, but you know, as a pass rush crew and as a D line and an outside linebacker crew, um, you know, we have to step up. It goes to guys like Alex Highsmith, who, who I thought played really well today. Nick Herbig, uh, Marcus Golden. You know, these are the guys we we relied on for depth all year. Um, and, you know, they've done a good job. Um, no one's going to go out there and say, hey, I'm TJ Watt, but uh, collectively, we got to pick it up. Cam, I'm guessing that there's not. All right, it's Cam Hayward. Afterwards, their defense did a good job of putting pressure on Tyler Huntley. He was on the run quite a bit, and it's also indication that the people in the secondary were doing their job. There were at least three occasions where I counted. He had about five or six seconds standing yeah. looking around, which tells you the coverage has been very good. Yeah, well, they played their starting offensive line, the Ravens, besides Kevin Zeitler. So they had their guys that were really, really good throughout the season. I thought Tyler Huntley played pretty good, didn't turn the ball over himself. He made some big throws um, when he needed to on third down, but he only ended with 15 for 28 for 146 yards with an 80.4 rating. Um, the Steelers did put pressure on the second half they really started to come after him and when TJ Watt went down that was a blow to the pass rush but I thought in the second half they turned up the heat they certainly did and the Steelers end up winning this game three straight must wins in the hopper and during that time Mason Rudolph with 112 right what are those numbers you were throwing at me 112 <laughs> plus rating three Whoa. straight games and put that in context well, for the other let me put this in perspective Bob the last three games Mason Rudolph has had 112.2 QBR all three starts. Let's put it in perspective now. Kenny Pickett has started 24 games for the black and gold. He has had a QBR over 112.2 zero times. Zero times in 24 starts. Mitch Trubisky, in his all the starts for the Pittsburgh Steelers the last two years, he has a QBR over 112.2 zero times. Ben Roethlisberger, in his last 25 starts as a Steeler Back, you know, when he retired two years ago, in 25 starts, the last 25, one QBR over 112.2, and Mason Rudolph has three in the last three games. Three out of three, ain't bad. All right, we'll take a break, come back with more as we continue our coverage up until 9.30. Soon we'll be taking your phone calls. Stick with us here on KDK Plus. It's your neighborhood Ford store, Extra Point. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers extra point. All right, let's talk playoff picture here again. For those of you just joining us, Steelers got a win, so that puts them in for now. However, they need some help along the way, and that would include tonight's game. Actually, Texans and Colts, if it ends in a tie, the Steelers would be in. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. However, if they don't, whoever wins, it doesn't matter. If there's no tie, that means Miami and Jacksonville are two areas that you have to look at. Uh, Miami needs to beat Buffalo and Jacksonville needs to lose to Tennessee. If those happen, one of the two, then the Steelers would get in. So I'm saying 63%. I, I think that's pretty impressive. It was at 1.11%. It's moved up because they've won three games, but they still need help. Now, the offensive line for the Steelers, really the key to this surge, I think. Mason Rudolph has been a spark getting in there, making plays down the field. But the offensive line then has come to life, moving people around. and. Uh, when you when you talk about some of the leverage they've been opening sure. up, it, it, it's it, it to me that's an infectious thing. I would imagine to everyone on that. There's offense. no question about it. Listen, there's two guys that really stand out to me too. Sam Allo, who's doing a great job of pancaking guys, climbing up the linebackers and seal them outside or inside. But the one guy that Coach Tomlin has talked about, Bob, and you know this is Broderick Jones. Ever since he's been in the starting lineup, the running game has changed. He brings a mentality. He brings an aggressive nastiness, and he's leading the way for Najee Harris as you see him right here. I'll tell you what, though, Bob. I've been very critical of our tight ends this season. I've been very critical of Pat Fryermuth and their lack of ability to block on the edge. If you want to have a good running game, you've got to block. Coach Tomlin always talks about tight ends versus D ends when you go against a 4-3 defense. These tight ends over the last month have improved drastically. They're doing a good job now, Bob. They like to go three tight ends in that formation when you have Fryermuth and you have Darnell Washington and you have Connor Hayward. They are sealing the edge. They're knocking those ends off the ball, and that's a big reason why they're having success in the running game as well. Yeah, and the key guys have all been healthy for the most part this season. Mason Cole included this year from the center of the Pittsburgh Steelers after the game. Get in. Yeah, it's probably the worst I've played in. It was just cold enough where it didn't snow and it just poured constant rain the whole time. Uh, but 
that's the AFC North ball. It's this time of the year. you got to be able to handle the elements. And uh, good to come out here with a W. Mesa, can you kind of put into words, and, and how does it feel to, to do what you've been able to do for the last three weeks here? Um, I always credit Coach Tomlin, man, just keeping this team focused, singular focus on, on one week at a time, one play at a time, one day at a time. Um, the ups and downs of this game are, are the peaks and valleys are so high and so low. Um, you got to be able to stay focused on just one week at a time, and that's what we've done. And um, I credit Tomlin to just keeping us keeping us focused. And the one thing that you guys are trying to do all year is get that running game going, and it's been really consistent these last three weeks, especially here again today. Yeah. Um, again, Coach Tomlin talks about that. This time of the year, um, you got it. You got to have a run game. Um, guys are beat up. The, as the year goes on, it gets more physical, and you just got to have a run game. And it opens everything else up. So um, it's been really good to have that. Um, we get in these playoffs, we're going to need them. We're going to need it again. It opened up probably the biggest play of the game. If you could talk a little bit about that, that third down, a clutch throw by Mason just to, to put it right on the money to Deontay. Yeah, just, just fantastic. Right when we needed it. Um, we hadn't had a whole lot of momentum at that point in the second half, and um, we got the third and manageable. We, we, we took a that saying to Deontay, whatever route he was running, and uh, took it to the house. So, again, happy for those guys. Happy for Deontay, man. He's been waiting for, uh, for a long one like that. It was uh, it was fun to see him take off like that. you got to be happy that the playoff hopes are still alive. What are these next uh, 24 hours going to be like for you guys? Go home and watch football with my family all day tomorrow. Uh, we'll be we'll be glued to the couch, and um, we'll be ready to go on Monday. Yeah. So everybody but George Pickens is going to be watching the games. Uh, pretty interesting. No, it was Najee Harris. Or Najee, no, it was uh, Najee, Najee Harris. Harris. That's right, it Najee was Najee Harris. Harris. Najee was the one who said it. But George will be watching and everyone else, and I think Najee will too. And why not? Because the Ford Road Ahead indicates this is what has to happen. If this game ends tonight in a tie, you can put them in the playoffs. You go to bed tonight knowing the Steelers will be in the playoffs. But if it doesn't happen, it's unlikely there will be a tie, Chris. This has to happen. Jags need to lose at Tennessee. And we don't know about the quarterback situation yet over there. Uh, will it be their starter or their backup? And then you got the Bills and the Dolphins and Josh Allen is on Miami. And Miami has a lot of injuries. So I'm putting my – if I'm hoping, I think the Jags have the best chance of losing. And that would be the best chance for the Steelers to get in. I think you're right. I think it's going to be tough. We're hard-pressed tomorrow. And how sad it's going to be if tomorrow late night – the Bills do not go in and beat Miami. Because I do think the Bills have won, what, five or six in a row? And they're hot. going down there. And uh, they're hot right now. Even though they're barely winning, they are still hot. They're winning games. But the, the one, the Jags, they have injuries. The starting quarterback's a question. We're going to see what happens there. And Tennessee, they're playing because Mike Vrabel is, uh, is nasty. He plays with energy, and he's going to have these guys ready to play. Yeah, but they weren't last week, and they got smoked they by did. the Texans. So they we'll did. see what happens here. And, you know, as far as Buffalo is concerned, the amazing thing about them, as good as they've been playing and winning, they may not get in. If they lose, they could be out completely, which Wild. is stunning when you think about it because they were many people's selection to be preseason AFC champions. Um, but that's the way it goes in the NFL. So there's a lot to watch tomorrow. When we come back, we're going to open up the phone lines. want to hear from you at 412-575-2600. Call us on a special edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Steelers win 17-10. Keep their hopes alive. Finish the season 10-7 and, and need some help. How do you feel about them? Next.